Hello, everybody. I'm sorry, I had to uh, adjust my microphone a bit. It seemed... It seemed to be picking up too much of the background in my room. And I think it's possible it might still be a bit too high. So let me adjust my filters here just a little bit. I'll bring down my game just a tad. All right, now y'all are going to have to let me know how that is. It uh, should be just about right judging from my peaks but yes the most intense flute music ever uh actually it is pretty intense this is from Wittekatan, which is a it's a band but it's also a dude uh named martin who built the marble machine which is a machine that plays music using nothing but a hand crank and marbles that's it but it plays it it, it plays uh vibraphone it plays drum, snare, uh, kick, bass. Um, the new one he's designing plays cymbals. Um, uh, and there's another kind of drum that I can't think of that it also does. because there's, there's three drums, there's two cymbals, there's 20, uh, 11 xylophone notes, maybe 12? I'm not sure. Um, there's a lot of notes. And, um, honestly, it's just fun, man. No, um, it's definitely snare. Um, I know it's snare and it's kick and I can't remember the third type of, of drum. But I'm sure I'll find out when I look at my uh, my YouTube feed because uh, he's working on doing a hundred thousand marble test sometime either this week or next week. So we'll find out. Um, also, hello and welcome to the show. So uh, there was a new update to the um, Polis A319, what we usually fly in X-Plane. Uh, there is the hi-hat and the cymbal. Um, that's on the new one. The, the old one didn't have the hi-hat. It did have a crash cymbal. Uh, this one has the crash and the hi-hat. Um, but yeah. Anyway, it's really cool the way that he's designed it. It's also got like a, a little rhythm machine now. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of stuff. It's it's really cool. Um, look them up on Wintergatan and Wintergatan 2. That's w you can see it spelled out down there. Um... Winter Katan and Winter Katan 2 are both them. One uploads weekly, the other one uploads daily. Uh, anyway, so there was an update to the A319 that we usually fly in X-Plane. And so I decided that although we've been doing quite a bit in Microsoft Flight, it might be a good thing for us to go ahead and jump into X-Plane again and take a look at the updates, you know, to an actual simulator. I, I mean, hot takes, I'm going to say it. So we are in Warsaw, which is where we left off in the A320NX in Microsoft Flight. But now we're going to jump into this A319, and we're going to make a flight from Warsaw to Vienna. Um, and for those of you interested, no, I will not be flying to Lowy, uh, Innsbruck. That's a little bit too difficult for me at the moment. Uh, I did try doing the circle to land there. Once on stream, we didn't die, and that's um, an accomplishment. I also don't think I flew it by procedures. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this down just a hair. That's more than just a hair rack. There we go. Sorry, it was getting a little difficult for me to concentrate. Note the hell I'm saying. Uh, so yeah, let's let's jump into this. Get it started. Uh, let's look at our preliminary pre-flight procedures. We need to turn battery one and two on. And then ground recorder. Um, external power. Fuel pumps should all be off. And then we need to load our fuel. And I am still on the wrong scene. So you haven't been able to see me the entire time. I apologize for that. Also, you've had that 
damn logo spinning around in your face for ages. And I'm very sorry. See, I've never been there, but we're going to fly there today. I'm not going to promise great um, scenery because it is the default scenery in MFS. Orbex does have it, but it's like 30 bucks, and I don't think I want to shell out 30 bucks for Vienna. Um, so, also a rack of symbol is there, and we can't see your face. You should be able to see it now. Yeah, I, I just picked up on that a minute ago. Did it give me scrolling switches? No. <laughs> I wish it had. Uh, but it was a significant update to the FMC. Um, let's see, I need to find my fuel. Here we are. Um, it gave me a significant update to the FMC. It changed some of the laws with how it moves things, uh, how, how it allows the plane to move. 5490, so we'll just go for 5500. And then our loading. Looks like we've got 144 passengers today. And we have a zero fuel weight of 57.4. There we go. Perfect. Thump thump. All right, so that's loading done. Uh, battery one and two, recorder ground control. External power, fuel pumps, fuel loaded, APU fire test. Ooh, still updates are good. Yes, exactly, exactly. Perfect, I'm gonna assume it did all the things it needed to do down here um, because I can't pull everything up at once. Um, all right, so APU master on. We're gonna wait for flap open while we turn up our lighting a bit. One thing I'd also like is for them to properly do the peanut butter cups. Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do there. 144 passengers, more like 144 bought, but still empty seats. Okay, yes. They are still empty on this particular plane. However. How, however. Oh, come on. They are physically present. And that's something that Microsoft Flight does not have. Like, they are physically modeled in the game. So you gotta give it that. Also, hello, Fiona. Welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for dropping by. I appreciate it. All right, let's start our APU now that our flaps open. Oh, would you st stop that? All right, one thing I do want to do real quick because it sounds like I'm not really hearing much. Uh, APU master start, APU start, uh, cockpit lights and McDo's are set up. I mean, I could turn down things a bit, honestly, because that's not needed. Um, flap lever should match the ECAM. Speed brakes are retracted, probe and window heat is not needed. APU bleed can come on. physically well the, the 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 seats themselves are there the passengers aren't um all right so air conditioning panel no white cross bleed should be set to auto uh air conditioner temperature that's fine close enough uh generator one and two fault light should be on external power can come off 
Electrical panel, all of the lights off, and ventilation panel is all off. Preliminary pre-flight procedures completed. All right, so let's start our adheres. On bat will come off. IRS two. And off. IRS three. Strobe light can come on to auto. Wing lights can come on. Nav and logo to system two today. Seat belts can come on. No smoking to auto. Emergency exit lights armed. Landing elevation is auto. Pack flow we need to set to normal because we got a heckin' lot of passengers today. Fuel pumps can all come on. Engine one and two fire test. And then radio three, two, and one can all come on. Now we get to set up our McDo's. All right, so let's go to pause in it. And you'll need to go to data or GPS monitor. We're going to go from EPWA to low. We are flight number. Actually, let's use the actual flight number, AUA624F. Latitude, we are at 5210 North. And longitude, we're at 2058 East. Today's cost index is going to be 6. Cruise flight level is going to be 340. The whole process that starts before the actual flight makes a lot more sense. See, I love to hear that because I do like to, to actually pretend that I can teach people something. I know I'm not, you know, a real pilot or anything, but you can learn something from this. Um, basically, like this pause in it, we're just telling the plane where it is so that it can take us from where it is to where it needs where we need to be like that's all it is oh god no <laughs> uh oh <laughs> i don't want to have to do that challenge i'm going to like i'm not going to let it fall off or anything all right so that's init so now we can hit up our flight plan today we are leaving from epwa warsaw on runway 29 and we're taking the Evan 7 Golf departure no transition and that should take us to Avena then at Avena we're going to jump on to November 744 to Tussin And then we're going to take Mike 984 to Mikov. Insert. And then from Mikov, we're going to start our arrival. And we're going to land ILS runway 29 via the Miko 7 Whiskey. No via, no transition. All right, now. Okay, so there's runway uh, low two nine. Okay, perfect. So that's actually no discontinuities. Awesome. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show kind of what I've been doing. You started playing X five again. I got the video thumb from. Uh, I got video thumb, the constant nausea of cutscenes. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, the cutscenes are too much. They're too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you kind of what we're doing here. Um, so we're looking at our flight plan, and we're starting at EPWA, and then you'll see you'll see here like all this part where it says Evan 7G, that's gonna be our departure. So that all comes together. That's already pre-programmed into the computer. I just have to select it, right? So you'll see here we go to WA901, and I'll step through it here. So we're at e uh, WA091, um, or 901. Then we'll go to WA921, which you can see right here. Then to EVDEX. And these are just like GPS waypoints. Think of them like uh, naming, naming points based on the cross streets, right? So EVDEX. And then we're going to go to Nippus and to Avena. And that's the end of our standard departure, right? Then we're going to get on the November 744 airway, which I wish I could show you the airway. Uh, like I went to the dock for my normal checkup and they're like, Trash, your thumb kind of sucks. You <laughs> stop playing X5. <laughs> go back and play the good ones. <laughs> um... November 744 is just this airway that is these these couple of, of waypoints in a row, right? And we go to Tussin. And that's where we jump off of November 744. And it probably continues on down this way. But we're going to jump off it and head on to Mike 984. And you'll see that through uh, HLV and Mikov. And then we start our arrival. This is the 7 Whiskey Arrival. Uh, Mikov and Mabod. And then you'll see us jump to uh, WW951. Now that's going to be really hard. Now normally you'd have vectors here. So we may vector ourselves a little bit. Let me get a little better angle here. So we may vector ourselves a little to the southeast here. Instead of going almost straight south. <clears throat> and then we'll intercept WW951. I might do that. I might not. I don't know. Uh, but then from 951, we go to F29, which is just a distance from the from the airport. Um, and that's probably where we're going to intercept the glide slope. And that'll take us down to low 29. I'll take us to, to Vienna, which is LOWW. And if we do fuck up, that blue part here, that's our go-around. But yeah, that's that's all that means. It's all very complicated, but it means something very simple. Uh, okay, flight plan. Secondary flight plan. Init B. This is where I need my ISCS again. Look at our loading. All right. So our zero fuel weight is going to be 57.4 slash 29.3. Block fuel is going to be 5.5. Then we're going to take off using flaps one. Yeah, because our, our V1 and V rotate, even at flaps one is both 141 will be fine. Ah, nope. Velocity one. Velocity rotate. V2 is 143. Flaps are gonna be two slash up 0, 0.0. Flex temp is gonna be 65. All right, now I need to really quick check what those buttons were. <laughs> I think I, I did five and seven. Let's see, keyboard. Search keys, five. Oh, good, they cancel each other out. <laughs> good, 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 good. All right, that's McDo's configured. 
Now let's move to our pushback and start. We'll need to set our altimeter, uh, which is... One zero zero eight. You recently repaired your PS4? That's awesome. Flight directors should both be on. Speed and heading should be dashed. Altitude. We're going to go ahead and clear ourselves up to 340. Normally there's restrictions, but I'm not going to obey them. So your week's been pretty good. Good. Excellent. Anti-skid nose wheel steering should be on. Switching panel is all normal. Transponder. We're going to set the absolutely ridiculous... 1200 actually we're not going to turn it to TARA but we are going to put it on and beacon on now we're going to request pushback and for that I need my live map alright so we want to push back tail left We're taking off runway 29. So we're going to look at better pushback, pre planned pushback. Ground to cockpit. Plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. And we're going to start that pushback. Toe is driving up. I wish they would add. Um, integration onto this for better pushback. Because having that on here would be so much easier, at least to just be able to initiate the pushback. Has, has been uh, weird. <laughs> I got no sleep half the week, half the weekend, and then last night I slept like nine hours. I went to bed at like 9 p.m., which I never go to bed that early. Ever. I think it's probably been 10 years. Why do the cars look like something from the PS1? Eh, eh, I mean, that's not what it's for. I mean, you gotta consider that if we were gonna render these cars... Connected and bypassed and inserted. Release parking brake. If we were gonna render these cars at 34,000 feet... Starting pushback. And you may start engines. Alright, we may start engines. Start our timer. Ignition engine to start. So, if we were gonna render that, then consider just how much processor that would take to render these things from 34,000 feet. Think how many you'd be able to see from altitude. Yeah. Um, there are some, like, Orbex probably has some that, that look pretty realistic. Um, and a lot of these are because of the uh, specific uh, airport sceneries. Um, there may be certain dependencies that I don't have on right. But... You consider that 99% of the time that you're playing, you're up at 30,000 feet. Nobody's going to care what cars look like from that far away. Alright, and that's positive start engine 2, starting engine 1. By the way, that little sound there. 
That's the power transfer unit. What it's doing is it's basically using the hydraulic pressure from the right engine to provide hydraulic power to the left engine. Yeah, but if you did that, like, again, this is this is how much processing power do you want to offload? Like, consider that not all the time that you're that you're at near ground level are you not flying. I would be very, very upset if I was coming in for a landing and my simulator suddenly chunks because it loads 300 cars in the parking lot. Operation right? complete. Set parking brake. Set parking brake. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. An update at low. Okay, that's two positive start engines. Engine mode selector to normal. APU bleed can come off. Round spoilers can be armed. Flaps set takeoff position. So it's disconnected. I'm bypassed and has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. Hand signal is on the left. Engine wing and anti-ice. I'm going to go ahead and turn those on today because it is already raining. And the temperature is heckin' low. APU Master can come off. And that's our engine start procedures completed. Looking for our taxi. <laughs> Look at you, Professor Iraq, spitting straight facts. Hell yeah. It's good to know something sometimes. Okay, so nose wheel light is going to turn on to taxi. I'm going to start my chrono, release the parking brake, the only thing that attempted that much fidelity I know of so far is Star Citizen, yeah, so far nobody has managed to nail that quite yet. All right, flight control check. We're gonna look down here at how our VSI moves. Full left, full right, full up, full down. Perfect, center. Okay, so that's gonna control my tiller. So this is gonna control my rudder. Looks like it didn't turn quite hard enough, so we're going to have to go down this way. And then we're going to turn on to this taxiway. Now I happen to know that there are no uh, aircraft on the runways. So I'm not going to worry about that, but just know that normally you would stop here. Uh, by the way, there's something else I need to load. However, we can go ahead and set our FMA as it nav and climb, set our auto brake max, terrain on ND can come on. very little of what that video tells you will actually save your lives, I'm going to do it instead. Here's the big thing to remember. If we crash or make an emergency landing, statistically speaking, 95% of you will survive. If it's a serious crash, 55% of you will survive. So if this plane is going down, concentrate. Because your life may depend on some smart decisions. 
Keep in mind that 80% of accidents happen within the first three minutes and the last eight minutes of flight. So that's when it would be wise to keep your shoes on and put your laptops away to stay focused. The safest seats on this plane are over the wings closest to the emergency exit. If you're not in one of those right now, here's what you can do to help ensure your survival. Look where your nearest exit is. Now count the rows between you and that exit. If the cabin was full of smoke, or upside down, or full of smoke and upside down, how would you get to that exit? Take a moment to visualize yourself doing that right now. Now look at your seatbelt. I know all of you know how to use it, but that's because nothing is making you lose your shit right now. It's common for people in emergency stress situations to try and open that thing by pressing a button that's not actually there, like seatbelt in your car. Take a moment to imagine yourself lifting that flap in an emergency. In fact, do it right now, just to get used to the motion. Emergency evacuations on the runway are more common than crashes. In the event of something like an engine fire, we need to get you all off the plane in about 90 seconds. This means you need to leave your fucking bags in the overhead bins and get off the damn plane in a quick and orderly manner. Those bags will bring the evacuation to a virtual halt. My first officer and I will be trying to get off this plane, and the last thing we want is to be cockpit blocked by your roll on. Now, you're probably well aware there's a life jacket under your seat, but forget about it. They're less likely to save your life than those little airline pillows. Sure, there was a famous 2009 emergency water landing on the Hudson, but there were boats on hand immediately, and nobody actually needed the life test. There was a flight that ditched in the Caribbean in 1970 where 40 lives were likely saved by the vests. But there was also one off the coast of Ethiopia in 1996 in which many passengers put them on too early and didn't get out of the flooded fuselage. To put it another way, if we replaced those life vests with a box of chocolates, it wouldn't alter your survival odds. Let's take a second to talk about those oxygen masks. Here's the thing. If we lose cabin pressure at a fairly low altitude, no big deal. You can breathe just fine. If we lose cabin pressure at cruising altitude, you can't. If that happens, here's what I'm required to do by law. I'm going to push the nose of the plane into an emergency descent that's going to feel like a roller coaster drop, and it's going to scare the crap out of you. But it's not dangerous. I practice. Also by law, I need to notify air traffic control as well as the airline and I need to do all that before I can get on the microphone and tell you what the hell is going on. So don't be surprised if you don't hear from me for a bit. I'm just doing my job, and you're going to be fine. For those of you who don't manage to get your masks on in time, you'll probably pass out and then wake up in a minute or two when they get the plane to a lower altitude. You want to know what the biggest danger is? The biggest danger is actually that your luggage or those DVD bottles you purchased and put in the overhead compartment will fall out when you open it and hit someone on the head. There are actually several thousand reported injuries from this every year in the United States alone. By contrast, the FAA only reports 58 or so serious injuries from turbulence. So one could easily make the case that she should be into a helmet to get the seatbelt. Another big risk is the drink card. Seriously. It weighs over 100 kilos and fully loaded in every your passengers get their elbows and feet broken when the drink cart slams into them. So keep your arms and legs tucked away. Why have an airline put some safety padding on the drink cart? I don't know. Maybe because you keep screaming at the attendants for your chicken feed plan or your drink not Same goes for spilled fruit, coffee, and teapots, and cups of tea. Every year, some poor passengers get hot coffee and tea in their crotch when there's a bit of turbulence, but until the airlines fix this, I'm afraid to run your own. Now, you're probably wondering how can this bucket of bolts stay in the sky if we can't get the system or the latch on the tray didn't work properly. To be honest, we sometimes wonder that as well. But stats speak for themselves. The actual risk of dying in a plane crash is 1 in 11 million, according to the Harvard School of Public Health 2006 study. So you're far more likely to be struck by lightning or killed by a shark. And it's certainly much safer than driving. Right after 9-11, many were scared to fly. 12 to 20% fewer people flew. 
but because more people made driving trips instead of flying, a German professor estimated that an extra 1,595 people died in car accidents in the year after 9-11, just in the U.S. So a reminder that we'll probably seatbelt sign on for nearly the entire flight. Because our flight crew doesn't really bother to get and they definitely don't like trying to speak to five million items. That or I do that. Neither way. Anyway, please sit back and relax while we take forever to serve you a drink and a barely out of an idea, and then leave the tray on your table and make it really impossible for you to squeeze out of your chair and in your toilet. Looking forward to flying the salty skies with you again. Alright, and that was takeoff. Uh, there is something that I would like to run by you folks real quick. Uh, I think maybe one of you could have already heard this. But, uh, so I have made something a little different that maybe you guys will enjoy. Uh, let me see if I can find it here real quick. Here we are. All right, hopefully you guys will enjoy this one too. guys have enjoyed this um the air hostess talks a lot in real life the ones i've been with were very concise um so this is this is uh not an actual airline briefing that's me <laughs> i recorded this based off of a pithy like announcement alternative i found on youtube it's not something that i wrote I did edit it, but I didn't write it. Um, something is going on with my lighting here, and I do not like it one bit. Um, hold on here. Oh, I do not like this at all. These are... Let's reboot these. There we go. There we go. I don't know what was causing my lighting to start to futz out, but it was. <laughs> Alright, looks like we are through our transition altitude. I missed that because I was fucking with my lighting. And my lighting is still fucking up. Oh boy. Uh, so our cruise altitude is going. Altimeter has been set standard. And that's all we've got to do for now. Um, hmm. I do not appreciate what my lighting is doing. I need to make sure that this one, at the very least, stays professional. Because without it, I think my green screen doesn't work. Alright. Hopefully that will at least keep it running. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with this one over here, but it, it's doing its thing. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't make it. I just edited it a bit. Um, the rest of it was on a channel on YouTube. Um... But yeah, if I were to give an actual briefing, it would not include nearly that much information. Um, and this was a combination of the captain's PA and 
the br safety briefing, which is usually given by the flight, flight crew, um, as opposed to the pilots. Uh, okay, ice sound detect. We are above the precipitation, so I can turn these off now. Okay, so the, the, by the way, the reason why I did that, so this is not a part of my checklist, but the Airbus, all Airbuses, to the best of my knowledge, operate under this uh, doctrine of at cruise, everything should be off. So if there's a light on, it indicates a problem. It means something is off when it shouldn't be or something is on when it shouldn't be. Um... So I, I saw a light here for crew supply. That's the oxygen system. I'm not sure. Um, that was me putting on the oxygen system, but we're going to die. <laughs> we're not going to die. That's just... Uh, so if, if we have an explosive decompression at, you know, 34,000 feet, Normally, that would mean that, that the flight crew has no oxygen to breathe. Um, so that's why we have these masks. They're full face masks, so even if, say, the, the cockpit was to be full of smoke, wouldn't matter. It'd be hard to see the instrumentation. Uh, but there's very few situations in which it wouldn't help. Uh, example situations where it wouldn't help, there was a uh, flight... I can't remember where they were flying, but they had a bird strike at altitude, and it blew out this front windshield, this windscreen here, and one of the pilots got sucked out the window, and the other two, and I think it was a three-person flight crew, I'm not entirely sure. It might have been two, and it was just the other, no, I think it had to be three. Um... So the one guy got sucked out. One of the other ones grabbed his arms. And then the third person was flying the plane. And they just held on to him. They had to call two of the flight crew from the uh, flight attendants to come forward and help hold him. Because they had to hold him half sucked out the airplane for like half an hour until they landed. It was absolutely bonkers. Also, if you guys are interested in doing some street generators, I will go ahead and throw that up. Uh, how did you... Yeah, oh, it was, it was terrifying. Okay, so let's go ahead and throw up this fight. There's no start here. Uh, do I need to... What do I need to do here? Ah, come on. Ah, that's why. Okay, so there we go. We're starting the battle. And I'm going to place a... I'm going to go with a tank. I'm going to place him right here because I think we're going to take this thing out first. That may be the only thing on the screen. Uh, it doesn't mention having uh, enemies appear over time, so I don't know. This is a tad loud. I'm going to maybe chill out a bit. I get it, we're outside the airplane, but... This is our customs delivery. I have mentioned it before. Uh, I did make this myself. That's a nice bank. Ooh. 
I wish the shading didn't do these jankies so much, but, um, uh, it is what it is. So, I've been trying to pre-add stuff like emotes and think of the channel points thing and figure out stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I definitely had my emotes selected before I made affiliate. Um, <clears throat> I'm still trying to figure out how to handle channel points. The problem with channel points, in my estimation, is just that it's too... It, too much of it is out of my control. Um, way too much of it. So, I can manipulate costs, but I can't manipulate gain rates. And I've seen control of both work very, very well in other streams. Uh, namely, like, Cardinal Zinn fuels giveaways with his, what he calls, card cash. Um, and that's, that's basically a currency that you get through his bot, but it's so that he can tone it down to a point where, like, one entry is one cash, it's done. It's simple. Um, like, I could probably manipulate the channel points to be used for giveaways or something like that, but there's, there's nothing that I can just take away for no reason, and there's nothing that I can automate with it. Um, other than things like unlocking emotes for a day or... Um, oh, what's some of the other ones? I can't even remember them. Uh, highlighting a message, chatting during subscribers only, which is ridiculous. Um, I will not be doing subscribers only for quite some time. And since I can stream again... I'm trying to get back in the flow, a whole new schedule and all that. Good. That's definitely the way to go. Um, having a schedule, a set schedule, helps a lot. Especially if you can tell people what games you're going to be playing and when. That's very beneficial. It helps people to find you. And it starts kind of priming the algorithm of Twitch to be prepared for you so that your channel starts getting promoted um, more. <coughs> Pardon me. Let's look here. I want to get a little bit more of a ranged view. So we're not even at top of climb yet. I know today's flight is going to be a little shorter than usual. Um... I just couldn't help it. There's, there's only so many A319 flights that go out of Warsaw. Um, and this was the clo the next closest one was, was two hours flat, which means it would have taken me at least 20, 30 minutes just to get off the ground. And then we're looking at two and a half, three hours, depending on wind conditions. And I didn't want to do that today because I have had such, so many sleep issues and my eyes have been super dry lately, um, mostly because of those sleep issues. So I wanted to, um, you know, I, I wanted to err on the side of caution. Yeah, I've been mostly playing uh, Classic on Monday, X on Thursday, and Mega Man 11 on Saturday. So... Explain uh, Mega Man 11 to me. Um, like, is that not considered a part of the classic OG Mega Man? I know that, that Capcom has been an ass about everything. And especially without the leadership of the original developer. That there's probably a lot of things that are not ideal about how they're running things. And I'm not sure if Mega Man 11 was released before or after that. By the way, apparently what um, Austin and the X-Plane team are working on right now is making those clouds better. Um, unfortunately, like, look, if anybody from the X-Plane development team is listening right now, which they're not, 
Um, but if, if they happen to watch it on YouTube later or whatever happens, if, if somebody knows somebody who works at Laminar, guys, improving the clouds is taking a shit in shiny paper and calling it better. You might be technically correct, but your weather system needs to be improved first. You're literally changing the wrapping on a shitty product. Now, I'm not saying X-Plane as a whole is a shitty product. It is, right now, the best flight simulator on the market. But, it has some of the worst weather handling systems I can imagine. It's like you guys thought that weather just wasn't important to flying. And if you really understand flying as much as you're supposed to, and as much as I know you guys do, then you'd know just how big of a, 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 of a factor weather is. And right now, right now, my winds... Like, let's, let's look at this. My winds are currently... Um, from the side at six miles per hour. That's not a big deal, right? But I could get a weather update right now that switches from my right side. I mean, that's, that's what heading, uh, probably 120. So they could switch from 120 to, let's say, 360. And 70 knots. Like that. Yeah, exactly. Weather is not important. <laughs> really? Yeah. Exactly. Like, the, the, uh, because of the way... There's no smoothing in between... Metars in in X plane, right? And and this what we call the Colgate blue, right? You see this Colgate blue over here? This isn't realistic. Not exactly. I mean, sometimes it is. If there's fog, yes, that's realistic. But it's like they they took the terminal area forecasts and they go, oh, it says that you have visibility of ten statute miles. So anything past ten statute miles you start getting this Colgate blue. But what you gotta understand is that 10 statute miles is the limit. Like there's nothing past that, right? Visibility caps at 10 statute miles. So if you can see 100 miles with ease because there's no fog and no low flying clouds, then it'll still say 10 statute miles. I don't know if that's what they did or what, but that Colgate blue, that needs to go. Um, you're obfuscating the ground. I think I know why you're obfuscating the ground. It doesn't look all that good. Your auto gen is kind of crap. Like, I mean, look at this. I mean, everything is covered in farmlands, and they're not even good farmlands. They're just badly pasted PNGs, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, again, like I said about the cars, this is a flight simulator. We're at 34,000 feet. We're not going to see a lot of detail of what's going on on the ground. But you're ob it's a little obvious in that you're trying to hide the badness of the ground by making this fake fog, right? And improving the clouds, yeah, the clouds suck. But the clouds are just a sticker, right? The clouds are just a sticker. There's nothing underneath it right now. The fact that there's no smoothing between different uh, Metars. So if right now we were to hit a Metar update, and that Metar update were to say that my winds are coming from the left at 80 knots, which it could very well be. That's, a, that's actually fairly normal for weather at this altitude, is, is to have weather from a certain direction at like 80 knots. That's normal. Um, if, if our next update was to go from this 
abnormal condition of winds from a side at 6 knots and go to a very normal winds on the other side at 80 knots, that means that the plane is going to be hit by a difference in winds of 86 knots. That's something like uh, 100 miles an hour. I mean, imagine that if you're standing still and suddenly got hit by a 100 mile an hour gust of wind. It would fling you clear off the fucking road. That's just how it would work, right? So, and and yeah, it's flying into a brick wall at 100 miles an hour. Yeah, exact. that's exactly what it is. And until they can find a way to stop that from happening, which wouldn't take much, right? Just institute a gliding procedure it, it has 30 seconds to make the change and the winds just suddenly change because if they instituted like a 30 second lag and they started the change had a 30 second glide from where it's at to where it needs to be and it popped a little thing up on your weather radar because there is a turbulence indicator on the weather radar i mean i can turn it on i don't have it on right now Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a turbulence indicator on the radar. If, if there's turbulence coming up, it will put it on my radar as a little blue patch. Um, and I can try to maneuver around something like a downburst, or I can just prepare to, you know, to, to adjust with my rudder or, um, with a bank, something like that at the very least. I can indicate to my passengers they need to put on their seatbelts. Speaking of which, I never turn them off. But since we're coming up, eh, we've got enough time. I can turn them off for a bit. And that's not supposed to happen. Thank you very much, uh, email. But yeah, um, you know, until they fix stuff like that, what's really the point of the clouds? Yes, the clouds are pretty, but... Understand that the only people flying an X-Plane right now are people who appreciate the system's depth that appreciate the maturity of this platform because if they were looking for pretty, they already have Microsoft Flight. Microsoft Flight nails this simulator out of the water when it comes to beauty. Nobody is flying an X-Plane right now because it's pretty. People are flying an X-Plane because it's got excellent systems depth. They're flying an X-Plane because, um, because of the simulation. They're not doing it because it looks good. They're not doing it because it sounds good. They're doing it because it is, systems-wise, the best simulator hands down right now. Bar none. But Microsoft Flight is a pretty good game. And it's beautiful. So, increasing the prettiness of your clouds before updating the weather system that drives them. You're trying to compete on their terms. You're trying to catch up where you're already excelling in other areas. Right? Their weather system, Microsoft Flight's weather system, is still not functional. It's doing its best. It is better than X-Plane. I will give it that. It is better than X-Plane. But its live weather is not functional yet. Why does every game, uh, playing game with clouds make them look like nightmare fuel? Okay, but Microsoft Flight doesn't. My, Microsoft Flight looks really good. They look really realistic. These, these are not great. They're not bad, but they're, they're also not great. They're okay. Unless you're flying over broccoli, yes. Um, but like, I've got some pictures of OG Microsoft Flight Sim, and they look pretty good. Actually, if you look at my Instagram, which I've only uploaded to once. Let me grab it. Let's see, uh... 
Instagram. All right, let's look at Here, post with my on the wrong one, which counts. I was definitely on the wrong account. I think X-Plane still has an edge on FSX out of the box. But that's not quite fair considering how old it is. Okay, no. No. Not at all. Not with the clouds, not visually, no. Out of the box, it looks better in MFS. Not even a question. Here's a good one. Let's see. How do I... Is that how I want to share? I want to... I just... Copy link. There we go. Oh, over FSX. Yeah. So this was me flying a, uh, a Grand Caravan in MFS. Now, I think you can tell, these look a lot better. Uh, that's the same one. Well, okay, so you can you can just look through those. Uh, I was trying to specifically link to one image, but apparently it doesn't want to do that. But you can pan through those and see some pretty good shots of the clouds and cloud walls. And they look gorgeous. But this was like the first two or three weeks of MFS. And they broke it. It didn't work anymore. Um, I don't like what they did. Oh, also, uh, I have a new command. I have a command for my YouTube channel. It is ugly and terrible, and I don't like it. And that's why I need a thousand subscribers. So uh, if you like my content, then please go subscribe to my channel. I beg of you. Uh, bring your friends. Bring your family. Bring your friends' family. Bring your family's friends. Um basically just you know i want to get to a thousand subscribers so i can change it to youtube.com slash iraq attack that's what i want i want it to be simple and easy for you guys that's that's what i'm trying to get <laughs> i just want you guys to have the best experience possible because that's what i that's what i want for you guys i want you to have the best of everything um but that's just me. I'm weird. Um, I'm not going to lie. Like, a thousand subscribers, that's also where you start to be able to... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. We need to, we need to drop some altitude. Fast. We need to enter our destination data. Performance. All right, so we need our METAR, which is going to be right here. So, uh, QNH is going to be 1015. Temp is going to be 1. Winds are going to be 290 at 10. Uh, decision height, I'm going to say 1,000 feet. So, 
I think my friends wouldn't enjoy your kind of content. That's unfortunate. It's fine. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed something. Ah, it doesn't want to show me. Three more? Three more what? I'm very confused. I'm very confused, Fiona. Please explain. Um, so, to explain some of this, this is the airport, L-O-W-W, -W, right? This is the time that the, uh, that the forecast was made. It's not a forecast. It's the current, uh, meteorological for, uh, conditions. So, is it, um, it was for 126, the 26th, at 2250 Zulu, um, which was about 20 minutes ago so this will refresh here in about 10 minutes uh and it says that the winds will be from 290 at 10 knots 9999 that's the visibility and that's where i where i say like this is where it explains i explained that it has a upper limit in the united states that would say like 10 statute miles 10 sm uh, this tells me that there are a few clouds at uh, uh, 1,100 feet, scattered clouds at 200 feet, broken clouds at 3,200 feet. The temperature is 1 with a dew point of minus 1. The Q&H is, uh, is 1,015 millibars. Uh, I think this means that there is significant uh, precipitation going on. Uh, with no significant changes uh, incoming. I'm not sure exactly how to read this part. I've never seen it before. That may even be something specific to this airport. I know there's a couple of those. Like uh, Christchurch has a forecast. My brain thought I only needed three more subscribers. Oh my god, I would love that. <laughs> But no, I need like 983 more. The stream of 11 is the first time I've ever played it, so I'm not. So it's going to take much longer than a usual classic game. Gotcha. So yeah, I want it to be its own own game stream so I can play other classic games. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, that makes total sense. Let's see if we can pull a descent wind request. Nope. <laughs> Too late. Too late. You missed it. All right. So we are on our descent. Uh, we should be on the ground probably 30-ish minutes, I think. Let me look at my toolkit. Come on. What's your estimate? Uh, this is saying 12 minutes. So yeah, I'd estimate probably about 30 minutes until we're on the ground. I don't know why Stream Labels decided to suddenly tell me that it had something important to say. It certainly did not. <laughs> okay, one thing I would like for sim toolkit if y'all could is add the ability to have my map start on my flight um like where my plane is or nearby um that would be ideal Or maybe like a toggle latch, right? So if I'm less than... Actually, realistically, like as long as I'm in pre-flight, start me at my origin. If I'm in anything before cruise, start me on my airplane. If I'm in the descent phase, then start me zoomed in on my airplane. If I'm on approach, start me at my destination. When I saw you play as X and X5, I wanted to laugh so bad. No offense. No, I am not good at it. Like, 
let me be clear. I'm not good at Mega Man games. I love them. But I'm not good. <laughs> um, and you gotta understand that also, like, I have never played until recently, in, until these streams, I have never played a 32-bit Mega Man. Um, and there are a lot of changes to how it plays that I'm still not used to. Like, uh, when I change weapons, it goes to a different button. I can use the normal X-Buster while on a specific weapon. So I could... Hypothetically, there is no reason why I should ever not be on a boss weapon. Because I can use that boss weapon at any time. Um, but I can also use the X-Buster. So like, there's no benefit to being on the default X other than the color palette. I mean, let's not be crazy. It's a good color palette. Okay? I don't, I don't want to give you the wrong idea. <laughs> but... That's the only benefit to being on the basic X, right? So, there's some things like that that I still haven't gotten used to. Ducking. I, the, the concept of ducking, because I've never played a Mega Man game before. No Mega Man games that included crouching. So it never occurred to me to use it, and I still don't think about it when I'm thinking strategically about the game. I don't think of crouching because I don't consider it a possibility. I don't know anything about it. Um, yeah, so we're, we're limited by Mikov. At Mikov, we have to have flight level 060. And with a maximum of, of uh, 270 knots, which we're already below. But yeah, like, if you're laughing at me failing, please laugh. It's okay, honestly. I laugh at myself. Like, I know I'm not good. I just enjoy it and I want to share it with people, you know? And if you guys are good at it, then show that. Like... I have been training myself a little bit on the original Mega Man X. I'm still nowhere near what I used to be. I used to be a lot better than I am now. But, um... I want to be better, but I'm nowhere near good yet. And I know it. I love to see people die in video games. Well, that's a little mean. <laughs> I'm just playing with Fiona. No, it is fun to watch people die in video games because the, multiple reasons, right? One is that watching failure is funny. Like, realistically, it is. Like watching somebody fall down the stairs. Slapstick. Slapstick is one of the oldest forms of humor. Right? There's nothing wrong with, with enjoying slapstick and gallows humor. There's nothing wrong with that. And, like... It also teaches you something. You get to learn from someone else's mistakes. I like to consider the the games where you can crouch X5 to 7 as the oh god please no games. <laughs> you know you're not wrong. Alright, so what was our meta our, uh, 1015. All right, I'll start that in just a moment. Switch over to Stream Raiders. That, that didn't work. Hey, there it goes. All right, let's get it started. Oh no, it looks like some of your guys got stuck. They're stuck behind me. Okay, guys, you gotta fix this. Oh, that doesn't feel good at all. They should definitely path around me. 
I think I want to do a later X game stream so I can show you how to not be bad at an MMX game. Ah, oh, come on, I'm not that bad. Oh no. See, now I think I feel like we're gonna lose this. Yeah, we're losing this. And we shouldn't have. That should not have happened. That was 100% because of the fact they couldn't path around me. But here's our salvage chest. Um, we'll be starting a new map next time, but we really don't have time to finish it all the way through again. So, um, since we're already on uh, approach, I'm not going to start another one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. Yeah, I like to see how people learn slowly. That's why I prefer to see novices. Well, then you love my stream, as Trashman can attest. Uh, one of my favorite fights in Final Fantasy XIV is Titan, only because I love to see how people keep falling and then learning how not to fall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, there are some things where I feel like Mega Man games kind of cheat. Um, I do feel like they kind of cheat sometimes. Um, like when the path, especially the X games, right? When the path to continue or to achieve the thing doesn't explain how, it, how you get there. Yeah. If I've got it, like if you're streaming sometime when I'm free, I'll absolutely throw your stream on. I love to support my community. Um, I, I did see that you posted going live a couple days ago. Unfortunately, at that time, I was in the middle of something. I can't remember what it was now. Um, but I was in the middle of something I couldn't get away from. And by the time I was free and ready to watch... Oh, shit. We are closer than I thought we were. Um... By the time I was free and able to look, you'd already quit. Quickman's entire stage is a cheap death. Yes. And they kind of copied that in uh, in X5. That's the one I've been playing recently, right? I haven't been playing 6, have I? No. I've been playing 5. Yeah. So they kind of copied that, that quick fall death technique in, in there. And um, I was not a big fan <laughs> Um, it was a little harder than it needed to be. Um, but like, what I mean is, is, is like, say, um, in Mega Man X2, no, th yes, 2 and 3, I think both did it, where in order to get, uh, final upgrades, you had to slide down a wall and see yourself, um disappear behind it i need to actually start doing my procedures <laughs> um landing elevation is set auto make do arrivals is complete performance approach is complete uh altitude is done we don't need speed break half we're actually caught up with our descent profile uh altimeter has been set landing lights on at ten thousand. we never turned them off good job iraq You've been uh, screwed up this entire time. We need to show constraints and nearby airports. LS as required. Second stage, yeah, the second sta uh, Sigma stage is Quick Man Remastered. Exactly. And I noted that. I noted that when I was playing it. Okay, so we're going to get configured very quickly here. Uh, FCU speed will be in managed mode. Speed brake is not required. Flaps 1 will be when we hit 230 knots. They've also changed some of the logic on this, which I very much appreciate. I was waiting too long to throw out flaps because um, the aircraft took its cue to slow down by what flap setting I was at. 
So if I threw out flaps as soon as I could and should, then I would coast down to my next flap speed. So I would be down to, you know, 140 knots and still be 10 miles away from the airport. And I should not be coasting that far out. Um, so they, they have updated some of that from what I understand. We're going to see how it plays out today. Um, but that was really unfortunate. It meant that we landed super slowly compared to a real airliner. Okay, so we were six minutes of taxi before. Okay. We'll do approach when the ILS is tuned. Um, auto brake's been set. And on another note, do you think you might be free on Thursday around 6 Eastern? I think so. I don't think I have anything planned that day. Your in-flight food will be from Chipotle. Please place your order with the flight attendant. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. I assume you're the flight attendant. And if not, you can forward it to where it needs to go. No. Okay. And I can probably just scroll up to the last time because it's the same thing I always get. There it is. There we go. All right, so we're at 5,000 feet and holding because we have constraints. Ah, now we're descending. Cool, cool, cool. Peanuts or just nuts? Well, I prefer cashews to peanuts. Peanuts, although I like peanut butter better than any nut. Um, but uh, my favorite nut is the cashew. And I have to be very careful about how much of it that I consume uh, other than oh cashews and peanuts everything else depending on like almonds walnuts any of that um i have a very mild allergy it's not enough to like make it hard for me to breathe or anything but it is enough for me to um basically get pieces of it stuck in my throat because my throat kind of swells up around the bit if it touches the back of my throat. And then it just sits there until I can cough enough to get it out. It's very uncomfortable. My favorite over any other nut is the pistachio. No, that's exactly how it is in English, yes. Um, I like pistachio flavored things can't eat pistachios I've, I've tried they're good all right engines are idle good good then we're gonna hang a right here 
I'll take two burritos with on, both only with chicken and cheese, a large bag of chips, and some applesauce and water. That sounds delicious, man. All right, so we're under 230, laps one. We're going to get quickly configured here. Laps one, approach, AP one and two on. Localizer and glide slope can be captured eventually. Um, speed check, flaps two. Landing gear, drop. Ground spoilers arm. Speed check flaps three. And speed check flaps full. All right, that is glide slope captured. Localizer captured. Altitude set go around. Flaps three. Ecam all green. Flaps full. Auto throttle is on. Nose wheel light can come on to taxi. Unweight turn offs can come on. We are lit up like a Christmas tree. Ecam no blue. Okay, there's our runway. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Final approach. a little bit longer to take over just because it's so bad visibility and this is something that you would actually do in the aircraft like you you whenever it is difficult to see you want the simulator you you want the autopilot in control if you on or off APU off for now I do want to turn on my igniters, though, just in case precipitation makes me sputter. Okay, my plane. Not yet unstable. We're doing okay. Retard, retard. 
reversers. Stow reversers. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Vienna. What happens when a bird crashes through the window? Well, actually, it can, and one of these days, I will probably show it. But um, the autopilot is totally capable of landing on its own. Landing lights are retracted, ground spoilers are disarmed, engine mode back to normal. What happens when a bird... Oh, I already read that. <laughs> uh, flaps are retracted, AP master is on, train on ND is off. Do we need to turn off our weather radar? Let's turn on our brake fans. Didn't want to brake quite that hard. My tow brakes are a little sensitive. The bird crashing through the window, I'll show that. No. Uh, I'll show the uh, the plane landing itself. Because um, there is a system called the auto land system. Alright, so let's go ahead and set the parking brake. Let's start our APU. Parking procedures. Park brake pressure is green. Uh, park brake is on. Anti-ice is off. Uh, APU bleed can come on. Well, no, because it's not done starting. Um, but I will show the, the auto land feature. It's just not as fun for me. Because I don't get to control the airplane. Um, Alright, so once that APU starts, which I should have turned on earlier. Alright, that started. APU bleed on. Engine 1 and 2 off. Runway turnoff lights off. Wing lights off off nav and logo off beacon off seat belts off elapsed time stop Come on. there you go one hour and 10 minutes of engine run time today not bad um okay Fuel pumps can all come off. Transponder to standby. Uh, McDo is dimmed. I'm not going to worry about that. Brake fan needs to come off. What are, what are, what are our brakes look like? Ooh, 320. So at what point are we in the Arrow X5 playthrough? Uh, I just finished, so I finished it on X. 
our next uh, our next stream will have us starting it on zero. Which um, Sigma was laughable. Um, I I legitimately laughed through it. So once we get uh, three hundred on these, I'll turn it off. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off now. Fuck it. We don't need to. We're not turning around. Securing the aircraft. Park brake. Check on its ears. Can come off. Exterior lights. All off. Um, APU bleed off. APU master off. Emergency exit light off. Uh, no smoking off. Battery one and two off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Vienna. Back up a bit. Look at that brilliant Colgate blue. This is, it's not bad for being a default airport in, in a, what, 10-year-old sim? I think it's pretty fun. Um, next week, I don't know where we'll fly next week. We'll have a lot more options leaving from Vienna. Um... Warsaw just did not have much in the realm of A319 flights. But overall, the flight felt a lot better today. Uh, maybe that's because of the laws that they changed in the logic. I don't know. I'll be there for Friday, but not Wednesday because of church. Yeah, yeah, I understand. F in chat. F in chat for trash, man. I'm so sorry to hear it, but you will be able to at least see it in the replays on YouTube. Uh, or you can drop by the channel uh, when I'm offline and watch it then. So that's the best I can offer. I'm sorry. F's in chat. Um, we will miss you. Um, wow, could I have been more right on the time? All right, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's going to be it for today. Um... And for those of you watching on YouTube, thank you so much for your time. Um, all the the love that you guys show is fantastic, and I appreciate it a lot. It means a lot to me. Um, we are trying to get to the point where I can very easily tell you guys that it's youtube.com slash rack attack. I can't do that until I hit 1,000 subscribers. So if you can, please, I ask you only to do these three things. One subscribe that helps all of us this is the usual youtube shilling um but so the algorithm fights us getting anybody else to see it um in order to beat them what we need is interaction from you guys and that means subscriptions that means likes and that means comments so if you could just leave a comment leave a like that would help us beat the YouTube algorithm so much faster. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you've enjoyed this flight. And I will see you guys next week. Please hit the Discord down in the description below. If there's any particular airports you want to see me fly in or out of. Um, we will be trying some of the more challenging airports at some point. I just need to get to a point where I'm a little better at standard landings. Before I start trying... Something like Innsbruck or Calvi. So um, leave your leave your comments on that down in the description or down down in the comments below, or on the Discord. I do read every comment, uh, at least for now. <laughs> I can't promise to do it forever, but I will do my best. Thank you guys so much for being here. You guys are great. I love you all. Have a fantastic day. <laughs>